It's being hailed as the most significant scientific breakthrough of the 21st century. After 60 years of theorizing and many failed experiments, scientists have for the first time produced more energy in a nuclear fusion reaction than was used to ignite it. The magnitude of the moment can't be understated. If researchers can upscale the results, it offers the world a potential source of near limitless clean energy. For now, scientists in California have only got a small return on their investment, producing enough excess energy to boil a few kettles. Two megajoules in, about three megajoules out, a gain of 1.5. The energy production took less time than it takes light to travel one inch. Kind of fast. As with all of these kinds of complex scientific undertakings, it's also an engineering marvel uh, beyond belief. And, and this duality of advancing the research, building the complex engineering systems, both sides learning from each other, this is how we do really big, hard things. And this is why it is so significant. Currently, nuclear power is generated by fission, splitting volatile atoms apart to create energy. But that also produces a lot of radiation and creates radioactive waste. Fusion takes two hydrogen atoms and forces them together to create a helium atom, the process that powers the sun. It generates energy but leaves behind no significant waste. This net energy gain has been an elusive goal because fusion happens at such high temperatures and pressures that it is incredibly difficult to control. So here's how they did it. A tiny amount of hydrogen was put into a capsule the size of a peppercorn. Then a powerful 192 beam laser heated it to 100 million degrees Celsius and compressed it to more than 100 billion times the Earth's atmosphere. That forced the two hydrogen atoms together. And the breakthrough has come at an interesting time for Australia when energy production and power grid stabilisation are at the heart of the national conversation. But while the experiment heralds the prospect of nearly limitless carbon-free energy, Professor Ken Baldwin from ANU School of Physics says its real-world impact won't come in time to address the concerns of today. The uh, fuel availability is almost limitless. Uh, the, uh, the deuterium and tritium uh, isotopes that uh, are needed to run this reaction are readily available. Mm. Uh, so we could see almost limitless uh, energy which has very little in the way of environmental consequences at all uh, being available in many decades to come. But as I said, this will be too late to address climate change uh, because it will uh, come into the second part of this century, most likely before we see commercial uh, nuclear fusion reactors becoming available.